and welcome to this little Splitchypedia video, which today I'm filming again outside. Um, this time a slightly overcast Crook of Loon, which is, I'd say, one of my favourite spots around here. I like to come out here and sit and think about life and times gone by. Um, which rather conveniently brings me on to the topic of this little video, and that's myth and mythology. Now, I've always been fascinated in myths, even as a kid. Um, I used to be a real sort of big fan of the you know, St. George and the Dragon, um, the creation myth. And obviously, when you're a child, you think, oh, yeah, these things actually happen, these things actually happen. You know, there were dragons, the world was created in seven days, there were just two people. But then, that's why you get older, you know, people start to pour cold water on them. They're very new to them. But that didn't really stick with me. Um, I've always been sort of like, well, okay, fair enough, you know. They never actually happen as we have in the book, so to speak. But, you know, there has to be a reason why these things are written. And then I went away to university and did a lot of research and studying, as one does. And you start to see the same myth starts cropping up in different cultures throughout like, the world and you start thinking well these things obviously mean something to people they mean a lot and that's why they've traveled from one society to another and it was as i was doing my research into myth as part of my degree that you know the second wave of my sam Spucci writing really took hold and i started revisiting the stuff i'd written as a teenager and started updating it um <clears throat> the first draft of fallen angel was finalized completely different what it is now um, that sort of thing and as I was writing the idea of myth started to creep in so if you're reading the Sam books and indeed all like the expanded universe and things which come you'll notice that there's lots of little tropes lots of little mytholo mythological things which crop up um, possibly the biggest of these has to do with the creation of the universe now in Fallen Angel um, it starts off with the creation of the universe and we start off in this black void rather like in Genesis and it's like the presence of God is there and we hear this song and this song is coming from within God and it turns out it's actually Lucifer um, Lucifer is risen inside the presence of God itself and then this song is joined in with by the waters that have filled before the abyss and it's this three beat pulse you have over and over and over again which we get over and over again in Sam's world um, sometimes it takes on the form of words you know the we are one we are one um, you hear it in people's dreams that sort of thing and as this song intensifies then creation comes about and heaven's made first and you have all the angels come into being and they find they're not the first people there they find there are these two entities um, the cup and the blade and it sort of like goes on from there um, so yeah that, that's the first myth which I really created myself and I'm rather pleased with it I mean hopefully you'll enjoy it when Fallen Angel does finally come out in a few years now although I have to say not too many now we're getting closer we're getting closer um, another big myth is that of Cain and Abel um, we have the children of Cain, we have the bloodline of Abel, the vampires and the werewolves, all from that same event when Cain, Cain um, slew his brother and struck him down because of the sacrifice to God. Um, Abel's was more um, appreciate, appreciated by God, um, whereas Cain was given the elbow. Um, and then obviously I developed that and we ended up with our vampires and the werewolves. And the last motif I want to look at, because there's so many, but I think the one we have to mention, of course, is dragons. Yeah. Sam dreams of dragons. Other characters expanded universe dream of dragons. We have the dragon stories going on at the moment as I'm writing. Um, in it's like the short story anthologies. Yeah, um, the big red seven-headed dragon. Well... People should know where that comes from. Read your book of Revelation. He's in there. Um, but also used in other mythology. Um, does crop up in Canaanite mythology. Crops up in Acadian mythology. So yeah, Revelation didn't have the first claim there. Um, and then we have the big black dragon. Um, 
now, this is very much mine. And we have the two of them fighting over Creation. Um, but it doesn't seem to be a fight which Creation's doing very well from, because it seems to be very, very destructive. You have armies of constructs fighting angels, you have armies of constructs fighting vampires around these dragons. Uh, sort of like Creation's going to hell in a handbag. So yeah, that's one to watch. Definitely one to watch. As is one which is going to crop up in Fury of the Fallen. Um, as I record this, I'm actually in the middle of writing Bloodline. I'm about halfway through. But I'm researching into Canaanite mythology and uh, Minoan mythology, which is going to crop up very, very prominently in Fury of the Fallen, when we have Asherah and Asbadeus. So, if you want to take one thing away from this little video, just go away and read some myths. They're stonking good fun. And, uh, yeah, they've been around a long time, and there's a reason why they've endured. Hope you enjoyed them, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.